Yo, what it do, YouTube? It's your boy, Coach Shocker. We are back after a week one game that was a mo an emotional roller coaster. It really was, honestly, but the Colts fell short to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The score was 31 to 21. Before I get into it, I would like to appreciate each and every one of your supports. I uh, appreciate everyone that tuned in for the live stream. Um, if you guys are interested in more content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Moving forward, turn on your notice. We're going to have content dropping. Uh, but moving forward, we're going to talk about the, the game, of course. The Colts fell short, but there's some bright things we could take away, some good signs and some bad signs and some questions. Let's start off with the bad for sure, right? So um, we're going to talk about, let's talk about, let's start with the offense. The offense is showing some signs of life, to be honest. Um, but the offensive line, a lot of people didn't like the production that it, it showed. But I think the pass pro, when it comes to pass blocking, I think they did a really good job. You've seen a lot of plays where Anthony Richardson just stood in the pocket and took his time to go through his progressions to actually read who was open to wait for somebody to be open to make a play, which was awesome to see. The run blocking was terrible, um, honestly. Um, a lot of plays were just, well, pretty much all the run plays were just weren't good at all. Like the blocking was just, the Jaguars just knew what the Colts were doing when it comes to run blocking, and they were just surrounding, surrounding the run game. Like they just had it figured out from the beginning. Um, the defensive line was a force when it came to that, but I think all, overall, I think the offensive line showed some progressions and some signs of improvement. One of those things being is though is because we have a guy named Anthony Richardson at quarterback now. And I think a guy like Anthony Richardson, when it comes to his mobility and being able to create outside of the pocket is a sign of, you know, of growth and improvement. And it pretty much shadows and hides some of those problems you have of the offensive line that may show when you don't have a mobile quarterback. Like if you have a pocket present quarterback that's not really mobile, like yeah, last year, for example, a guy like Matt Ryan or a guy like Carson Wentz, Sam Elliger, maybe, uh, but Nick Foles of that nature. When those guys are in the pocket and they can't be as mobile as you uh, will hope to create something out of nothing, they're going to result in a lot of sacks, interceptions, and fumbles or a few throw rates. But, you know, that pretty much showed last year, and that was a big issue, is not, our quarterback not being mobile enough to make something happen um, and not just be a statue in the pocket. But having a guy like Anthony Richardson, you've seen the glimpse in training camp. You've seen a glimpse in preseason. He can make something out of nothing. And there was a lot of plays where he just made a play off of his feet just by moving around and moving outside of that pocket on the rollouts. And it's, tru it's truly a, a beautiful thing to see. Uh, another thing, uh, the run game, like I mentioned, uh, the run game was very bad to watch. Um, it was something that you're not used to, you know, that you don't want to see as a Colts fan, especially when we're campaigning for them to run the ball. And that just happens to not be a thing. A lot of Colts fans predicted this moving forward is that, you know, the run game was going to be very evident moving forward into, you know, early in Anthony Richardson's career just to open it up for him to, you know, start creating pass plays. The run game was very used. It was used. The usage rate for running was very high. But unfortunately, you know, Deion Jackson had a very bad game, in my opinion, plus the fumble. Um, he just couldn't seem to figure it out. But it's not all on him. The offensive line, when it comes to blocking on a run, just wasn't great. Um, other than that, you know, Evan Hall, he got banged up. He had an injury, but, it, you know, it was a tweak. We'll get more on that later on in the week. Uh, you know, I was campaigning for Jake Funk to come in early. Uh, I'm a huge Jake Funk fan. Um, but, you know, just due to the speed and elusiveness, I think he could have made something happen out of nothing. But a lot of fans was rooting for Jonathan Taylor. Uh, you know, Jonathan Taylor's on the PUP list, the whole contract negotiation thing. A lot of fans thought, you know, Jonathan Taylor uh, could have made some of those plays happen when it didn't. Um, and, you know, a lot of fans are right. Jonathan Taylor probably could have. But I don't like to think of, you know, could have, would have, should have. Because in natural reality, Jonathan Taylor is coming off of an injury last season. It wasn't his best year last year as well. So I don't like to predict, oh, you know, it's one yard. Could he have done it? You know, because in the, the natural situation last year, there was a few times when, you know, it was fourth and short, and we asked for Jonathan Taylor to do it and just couldn't get up there. And a lot of that is due to the offensive line. So like I mentioned, you know, when it comes to Jonathan Taylor and the Colts, I feel like the offensive line situation still would have, you know, it doesn't matter who's back there. It could have been a star. It couldn't have been a star. With the offensive line blocking the run, I don't think anybody could have made any type of success with it. And that's no knock on Jonathan Taylor because I'm a Jonathan Taylor fan, just like everyone else. But I feel like, you know, with him on the team, I feel like the blocking still would have been poor. So it wouldn't have created nothing for Jonathan Taylor, even though he can, you know, 
bounce out left or right and try to make a play out of nothing, but it's one yard. So I feel like nothing would have changed, honestly. It just ha it just means the blocking has to be better, in my opinion, in all honesty. Now, we don't know what the future may hold going into week five when Jonathan Taylor comes back, if he's going to play or not. But, you know, we're going to leave that up to them. And moving forward, you know, like I said, the run game was just terrible to watch. Anthony Richardson led the, the team in running, which was which was fine, uh, even though, you know, he made some gutsy runs when he almost hurt himself. Um, and he wound up tweaking his, uh, his knee. Uh, he bruised his knee at the end of the game, but he's fine. Um, he, you know, he went down and, you know, didn't get up for a minute, so a lot of Colts fans was worried, but it's okay. Uh, moving forward, we're going to talk about the wide receiver department, the wide receiver room. Um, you know, they weren't used a lot this game, and that kind of bothered me because, you know, we got some talent that just couldn't get the ball. Um, you know, well, I would put the receivers and tight ends in general together in this one, so I won't hold you up. But, you know, Josh Downs, I feel like if he was used more, the offense would have seen a little bit more production. Um, you know, there was one play earlier in the game, like in the first half, when Josh, Josh Downs caught a zip from Anthony Richardson and just took off for like 10 yards, 10 to 15 yards up the middle of the field, which almost led to a touchdown. But, um, yeah, there's plays like that when Josh Downs is your gadget guy and he's, you know, he's quick. You know, we know how good Josh Downs can be. Reggie Wayne knows. It just comes down to getting him involved more into the offense. And, you know, it's not an overreaction because it's not an overreaction to me because I know how early in the season it is. So why would I waver or wander talking about, oh, we got to get this guy involved. It's only week one, you know, so we're just kind of, let Anthony Richardson, I feel like they're trying to let Anthony Richardson go grow into the offense because this is a new offense. So it's going to take some time to develop. And plus, he only seen 13 snaps so far in his football career. So, well, 13 starts in his football career. So it's like, we can't really, you know, question Shane Sykes' scheme. We can't, you know, downplay the offense or things like that because it's only one week. But, you know, we've seen the potential that can happen when we do get Josh Downs involved. Michael Pittman Jr., he got involved a lot in the second half but he on the first half he just kind of went silent and that's just due to the usage rate you know low usage rate on michael pippen jr we barely used alec pierce alec pierce had one catch but he got targeted three times um but you know colin granson i think out of everybody had a really good game in my opinion um i thought he was really solid and then other than that it's just getting the receivers involved more honestly i think that's opens up your offense more once you start RPOing, getting the scheme involved, you know, starting to get the defense off edge when you're running the ball, running RPOs, things of that nature. We've seen what happened when Michael Pittman Jr. got the ball. That screenplay took him for 20 yards. It was like 30 and 28 or something like that. And he took it to the house, 30 and 25, and he took him to the house. But, you know, it just comes down to just using your receivers more. And I think that's going to happen over the, over the season, over the course of the season. Uh, we just have to be patient. It's only week one. It, it happens. The Jaguars, I feel like they didn't open their offense up fully, even though they made some plays. Uh, but, you know, it's just week one. So things, you got to get things out of your system, like going forward on fourth down. A lot of fans didn't like them going forward on fourth and four. I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, we got to realize we got a new coach and a new QB. So, you know, some things are going to be like, why did you do that? But, you know, it's week one, like I said. We got to figure it out. Anthony Richardson threw an interception late in the game. I kind of wanted it to happen earlier, but, you know, it was just bad timing. Tyson Campbell. Uh, I was told he was the best corner on the Jaguars, faded him into throwing a pick. And he learned from that. And he learned from that in the, in the same game, which is awesome to see. Uh, you like to see development throughout the game, throughout the process. How do you recover from those situations, the mistakes? It's like a mental error. How do you learn, how do you learn from those? And he learned from that during the game. So that was a good thing to see from Anthony Richardson. Um, going towards the defense, I think the defense stood out. The defense did a solid job. Our front line did amazing. It was good to see Quiddy Pay back out there pausing pressure because last year, you know, it was, a, it was an up and down season for him. And we asked about Quiddy Pay going into this year, how he was going to bounce back. How was he going to step up with the loss of Yannick Ngakwe, losing him in the offseason and going somewhere else? How is this defensive line going to look? And I felt like they was faster, more athletic, and, and very good at pressuring Trevor Lawrence because that's what I asked for. I asked if we can pressure Trevor Lawrence, how would that look? And you've seen it. Shout out to Tory Brown, uh, Tony Brown catching an interception early in the game on Trevor Lawrence. This team did a really good job on putting pressure on Trevor Lawrence. The secondary, I know a lot of people questioned it, but in all honesty, I think the ball placements on Trevor Lawrence that he was throwing it just wasn't catchable for the defenders. He was just putting it on the money each time. There was times where he would roll out the pocket, throw on a run, and the way he was just placing the football just for his wide receiver only to catch it, there was no question. 
There was no question. There was nothing you could do about it at all, honestly. I think Trevor Lawrence was just putting the ball on the money on certain plays, and it just was a, a, a sight to see. Other than the secondary, Julian Blackman almost caught a pick. The ball fumbled out of his hands. Totally normal. I get it. I said the ball was slippery. So, I mean, if you look at it on replay, he fumbled the ball like at least six times trying to catch it. Um, so I thought the ball was slippery in my opinion. So it is what it is. But Zaire Franklin and that linebacker group, they stood out today, man. They stood out on that game, man. They really did. Zaire Franklin, it was good to see Shaquille Leonard back out there. The linebacker group did an amazing job. The, the front line, they did great. DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart, uh, Samson, uh, Equalbaum, uh, he stood out. Cody Pace stood out. Uh, I just think the defense, in all honesty, had a really good game. They really did. Now, of course, you say, well, it's not good enough because the Jaguars won. I mean, but this is the same issue we've seen over the years when it comes to the defense being on the field for too long. The offense couldn't make any noise, and they went for it on fourth down, so that just caused for the defense to go back sooner than expected. And, of course, the defense is going to get gassed, so they're going to get cooked. It happens. It's normal. Blown coverages, things of that nature. But I think, in all honesty, the defense was the sole reason we was in this game, um, and they did what they had to do. So I was not, uh, I was impressed with the defense. I loved every side of it. And, you know, the offense just got to be better moving forward. I think the takeaway from it in general, I think Anthony Richardson has shown signs of improvement. I've shown, he's shown signs that he's ready, he's confident, he's composed, and he's learning from his mistakes throughout the game. And that's awesome to see, and it's only been one week. So I'm happy to see, you know, him out there, his fresh start. The crowd was electric, the game was electric. There were signs, and this, there was expectations that shown that we had a chance that we could have won it. We could have won the game. But, you know, to each his own, you know, penalties happen. It was unfortunate Quentin Nelson went down, but he came back. Uh, but like I said, it was an unfortunate loss, but they've shown you progress. They put up more points on offense than we've seen all season last year, in my opinion. I think this offense, even how still it was, it was stale, but I think it was still better than last year's offense. And that's not saying much. So you guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section about the game. Who was your MVP for the Colts? Uh, if you're a Jaguars fan, let me know how you thought the game went. Were you on the edge of your seats? Were you nervous? Uh, let me know all these things. Um, it was a good game, and overall, uh, I enjoyed watching it. I was stressed out. I was on the edge of my seat eating popcorn, but I really felt like the Colts could have won that game. Moving forward next week, we play the Houston Texans. It's going to be a good one, Stroud versus Richardson. But all of that, you guys let me know in the comment section. This is Marcus. And until next time, you guys stay tuned. Signing out. You've been Coach Shock.